All right. So often an investment bank does not do their job alone. Often they team up with other investment banks. And that brings us to this concept of an underwriting syndicate. But before we do that, we should know the reason that they don't want to do this alone. So most investment banks serve as underwriters. With an underwriting agreement, it says, is a contract between a firm and an investment banker. When the stock is issued where the investment banker agrees to buy the entire issue at a set price and resells. In an underwriting agreement, the investment bank makes a promise to the firm that we will buy all of your stock and we will pay you this much. And then we will turn around, mark it up and resell it to our clients. Okay. Here, since the investment bank is making a promise, they are taking on the risk. Okay. Um, the firm gets a guarantee. The firm is guaranteed a price by the investment bank. And if the investment bank prices it too high and, you know, promises too high of a price to the firm and then tries to turn around and sell it in the market, they have to eat those losses because they made a promise to the firm. They are taking on the risk. It's often why it's the same, or I should say, it's the same reason that we use the word underwriting when we talk about your insurance carrier. Your insurance carrier serves as an underwriter to you. Why? Because they are the ones taking on the risk. They are underwriting your contract. Now with a best efforts, it's just the opposite. It says, it kind of sounds like what's in the name, a type of contract with an investment banker when issuing stock under this arrangement, the banker is only committed to making every effort, like I'll try my very, very best to sell the stock at the offering price. So here there is no promise. And so who takes on the risk? The firm. All right. The firm just has to like be willing to take whatever price the market ends up um, being willing to pay. Okay. Most investment bank contracts are set up as underwriting agreements, not as best efforts. It's only for like really, really small ones where like you have no power of the firm kind of thing that they would maybe try to set you up as a best efforts. But other than that, for any kind of firm that's like legitimate, it's going to be an underwriting contract because the firm doesn't want to take that risk. And you could just go down the street to the next investment bank if you wanted to. Right. So it's just it's a fact of life for the investment bank. Now, because of that, the investment bank looks for ways to reduce their risk. Right. Because they're like, oh, my God, I got to buy all the stock and guarantee the price. Oh. <laughs> so what we typically see is that investment banks will form underwriting syndicates. It says this is a group of investment banks that underwrite a secure security issuance. Typically, you have a lead underwriter in that syndicate. They're like the lead investment bank. It says this is the investment bank that sets up a security offering and forms a syndicate to help sell it. All right. So you can kind of think of it like you have your lead up here. Um, also sometimes called the managing underwriter. Then you'll have all your little investment banks under that you know, that are part of the syndicate. And then if it's an even larger issue, you could have investment banks under those investment banks that form what's called the selling group. So here's your syndicate. And then you have your selling group. Um, the difference between the syndicate and the selling group is more like a wholesale retail thing. So like each of these little investment banks down here in the selling group will go and they will buy shares from the syndicate and then they'll turn around and resell it. So it, it's just breaking it down into smaller and smaller chunks because sometimes these deals can be so, so big. And so it, it's rare to see an investment bank go at it alone. 
And again, it's for that reason that it's because it's an underwriting agreement and they don't want to take on that large amount of risk of guaranteeing the price to the firm. So they can form a syndicate and then the syndicate can even expand into a selling group, um, just breaking it down into smaller, smaller chunks as we go. So selling group just says all members of a syndicate plus additional dealers and they're the ones that are usually selling directly to retail customers, right? So the syndicate may deal with institutional investors and then the selling group may deal more with individual retail customers, just normal everyday people with lots of money. <laughs> um, now, you are just for an example, really quick. Textbook gives the example of Facebook's IPO. The lead underwriter there was Morgan Stanley. The sales syndicate included over 30 firms, including Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, um, Barclays, Citigroup, Credit Suisse, um, Deutsche Bank, and Wells Fargo. So every big bank possible. <laughs> um, yeah, so they team up often in this. Um, now, there is an alternative to this. So these, like kind of when you're studying these definitions, I think it's easy to kind of like group them together, right? Um, and unsyndic unsyndicated offering is the opposite of what we just talked about. And an unsyndicated offering, what an investment bank will do, it will just be one investment bank by itself. So again, just the opposite. And they're gonna sell directly to institutional investors. And part of the reason why they can do this is because so much stock is held by institutional investors. Right, like most stock is not held by retail customers, right? Like I don't own any stock directly, even though I teach finance. I have a 403B, which is the equivalent of a 401k, but a not-for-profit 401k, um, since I only have it from universities. But you know, it's the same thing, but that would be considered institutional investing, right? Because that gets managed through um, a mutual fund into a retirement plan. And so these unsyndicated offerings, you just have that one investment bank bypassing retail customers completely and just bypassing individual investors and brokers and going just directly to these very, very large institutional investors. Now, why? It's cheaper. Of course, it comes down to a money thing, right? That they often like the the difference in um the fees and everything is like a full percentage point higher for like um in terms of the commission that the investment bank makes right so they can make one percent in total higher if they just go directly to institutional investors um it's also lower fees for like the firm so everyone kind of benefits off of this, right? Like the institutional investor benefits because it's cheaper. The investment bank benefits because they get a higher commission. The firm benefits because it's cheaper. And you get the same results. You still get to place the issuance. You just don't have all this, you know, spider web of investment banks having to work together that you do down here. Right, because the lead investment bank's gonna always make the most money and then the syndicate's gonna make less money and then the selling group is gonna make less money, right? So if you can cut all that out, well, you get to make more money. And we know in finance that, you know, <laughs> that's a thing. And so overall, it's cheaper to do an unsyndicated offering where we go directly to the institutional investors, but not all stock offers are going to uh, appeal to institutional investors. And so in those cases, we aren't going to be very successful pursuing an unsyndicated offering. And we're going to have to go with the underwriting syndicate instead, and maybe a selling group also. So that's our first kind of step is we have to form that underwriting syndicate. And then we have to deal with all kind of rules and regulations when we start advertising this. And so Next, we'll talk about some of the regulations surrounding securities. Don't worry, you won't have to remember like individual like SS2 or SS3 kind of thing. Just know the general kind of rules and regulations they're going to have to follow.